Okay, welcome to Shane's Main Shop again. Thanks for checking in. Um, today I'm going to be changing the front wheel bearing on a 2002 Saturn. Um, I looked online for some videos on this. They had some rear bearings, but I didn't see any front bearings, so I thought I'd just do a quick video, and hopefully it'll help somebody else out. So as you can see, I already got the car up on the lift, and um, just to save a little video time I already have the tire off um, I just sprayed some of the bolts and stuff with WD-40 just to kind of loosen things up a little bit um, this brake caliper uh, has to come off so I've already sprayed uh, the two bolts to hold that and I've actually broke them loose so I'm gonna let um, this set a little bit here uh, go get some wrenches and start getting this uh, part okay so I got the caliper off I took the two brakes off, brake pads. Uh, hopefully you can see this all right. So now I gotta pull the the assembly unit that holds the caliper in place off. And you got these two bolts right here. I can probably quickly spin those off. Fortunately all this is coming off pretty easy. Sometimes you gotta fight with it. You probably could have done this by leaving this all together, but it's a lot easier to get in behind here without having that other stuff all in the way. So there, make sure you keep all your stuff together, don't lose anything. This should slide right off. Um, and I like to keep stuff in orientation as how it goes, so when you put it back together, you're not um, messing something up. So now that we got that off, um, we got to take the um, the disc off the front. So I got to go grab a couple tools, and uh, we'll. Uh, get going on that plus you notice I got the wheel cut all the way to to the left hand side which gives us better access back here so you're not trying to reach in behind here and plus you can get a hold of the bolts a lot better so it definitely makes that a lot easier so uh, just a second we'll come back and and uh, start taking this uh, the front part off okay so that piece is all off um, I got this broke loose here you got to get your disc off um, sometimes you got to tap it a little bit get it to come loose if for some reason the the main bolt here um, doesn't want to break loose then the right thing to do would be to leave all this together have somebody stand on the brake so it's holding on to this tight so it's not trying to turn and then you can uh, um, get a better grip on it or, or it's holding it better so you can get this to break loose but in this case we were able to get it without too much trouble so we get this taken off alright so I'll finish this up and then we'll do a little bit more here in a second We'll be right back. Alright, so this has got to get pulled off. Uh, here's actually the, the new one here. Actually, I'll just take the camera over here for a second to show you. So this is, uh, hopefully I got it right because I got the camera angled wrong for me to see. But here's the new Baron. Um, your, your snap ring, new bolt, and of course your new uh, the hub assembly. Um, it's easier just to buy it, the whole thing. So you don't have to worry about trying to get the old um, Baron pulled off of the old unit. It's a heck of a lot easier. It's not that much more money. It saves you a lot of headaches just to um, just to tear, buy the whole whole unit. But I gotta get this one off here first. And so you can see I got a puller on here. Hopefully we can get it to break loose. It's already somewhat coming loose, um, but it's just going slow. But usually, as anything with the right tools. It goes a lot easier. I think this is now sliding right off. So 
get this pulled off the. Obviously loose enough. It should come in. No, nope, not enough yet for me to just pull it. It's like those bolts that are too easy for a wrench and too hard for your hand. That's kind of what this is. It's coming right off the spline of the uh, of your front um, axle or whatever you want to call it. Actually, what's coming? What's happening is that's pushing out the back, mm -hmm. which is fine. That's come off, but I still got to get this pulled out of the hub assembly. But she should come out without too much trouble. Now, okay, I got to go grab something. We'll be right back. Okay, so in order to get this out, there's a clip ring. Uh, this is the new one, but there's one on the back side. Of course, I got the, the sh shaft loose. Uh, and out of the splines, but this won't come off until you pull um, this clip ring from the back side. In order to do that, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You can't really get in there, so uh, what I'm doing now is I'm actually pulling these. These came out of here. Hold it onto your uh, your strut. Uh, the whole idea is I'll be able to hopefully swing this forward enough. I do have the bottom one um, loosened up too in case I have to pull off the um, ball joint on the bottom here to get this to pull forward enough so the shaft will go completely out the back then I can access that clip ring. Once I can access that this assembly should come out and then we'll uh, start the um, reassembly uh, process. Hopefully this is coming loose here. Let's try while I get the... yep yeah, see so that's going to slide right out right out of this unit here. And of course you just want to be careful that Nothing drops and pinches you or anything like that. And usually this will not work without taking the bottom part off because you can't get this to back out enough. Which is exactly what I'm going to run into here. So I'm probably going to have to pull the bottom off as well. Unless I can gain access to this clip ring here. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Basically just trying to get the shaft to come out the back. Some vehicles, there's enough length or, or they're not too long that they actually will pull out. And sometimes they don't. So every vehicle is a little different. I've never done one on a satin right now. She's actually bound up here. So I'm going to try and tap it loose. There we go. There we go. And it might actually give me enough to access the ring, clip ring, um, which I know you can see my hand, but right in behind here is the clip ring. And, yep, I think I can access it now. I just got to get a spe special uh, um, pliers that are made for taking those clip rings out. And uh, hopefully we'll pop it right out. So we'll be back in just a second. Uh, I just want to give you a quick update here. Um, this is why a lot of homeowners and backyard mechanics uh, don't do this job because it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So as you can see, I got the whole, I guess this is the barren housing or whatever, but it's the whole uh, unit that holds your wheel, your axle goes through here, um, your, your tie rod for your, and your steering tie rod goes up in here. Um, so all this I had to take apart because I had to get this clip ring, which you can see is finally out, rest right inside this rim right here. Um, this is the, the new one, but just to show you, this would normally be in here like this. And I had to pound that out this way. And then uh, what's left in here is what's left of my Baron. And as you can see, it's kind of all apart, so I'm pounding it out. should look like this as a whole unit. Um, but it's all all the bearings have fallen out of it as they've been taken apart. So right now, once that clip um, is out of the back side here, then the bearing has to be punched through this way. So I've got it over on the vise, um, and in my case, I got some really big rugged sockets that just fit in there. You want to grab that socket? I got my helper, my wife, but she don't like to be on video. So I got a huge, uh, you know, this size socket. You can use a 
uh, a solid bar pipe um, rod would be the best, but it's pretty good size, so a lot of people don't have that laying around. Um, but I'm able to get that, and it rests right on the um, barren where the barrens ride inside there. So because it's too close for you to catch it here, because there's a lip where that barren rests up against, so you really can't catch it. Um, but if the barrens are all out of it, you can catch this lip right here. And then I got it over on the vise, and of course I'm, I'm pounding this. Um, with a big sledgehammer, which eventually is gonna, and it's coming loose now. You can see, you know, I sprayed some stuff in there. I mean, this is like zero tolerance. There's no, there's no clearance. This has got to be really, really tight when it's all together. So it's not gonna be easy. Um, so think twice if you haven't worked on many cars. This is not a good first project. Um, but anyways, that will uh, eventually come out this side here, and um, I'll start um, reassembly. Um, and then of course we'll, you know, we'll put all this back together and, and uh, show you some more video here in a few minutes. So let me get this punched out the rest of the way and we'll show you what we got. Alright, sorry for my greasy arm to be in front of the camera, but um, my wife went in the house for soda. But I just want to show you, I got, um, um, this is what's left of the Baron. I don't know if you can see, you know, hold one up. Um, there's the, the ball barons. I picked up a few. They went all over the floor and I took this apart. Um, and then, you know, this is a, a piece of it. Uh, this is where the barons are all usually just resting inside. This is a plastic piece. It's kind of like, um, I guess it just really just holds the barons in place um, as they ride around, you know, the um, baron assembly around this lip right here. So normally this would be inside here like this. The barons would be all you know, popped into place there, like that. You can kind of see that, I think. Uh, maybe if I shorten the light a little bit here. Oh, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Um, but you can see one bear, and I just put back in place right there. And then, of course, you know, there's the rest of it that all came apart. And then, um, when it's all together, this piece um, is in here as well. And it's just like that. And then it's inside this piece in here like that. So now I've got it all pressed out of here. I'm just going to make sure this is all uh, nice and clean in here. Um, we'll clean this piece up. This is obviously all uh, junk, the old one. Put that aside. Um, we have a new Baron, which will be pressed in, pressed in here once we're ready. And then this will get pressed inside the the new Baron. This comes as a kit, actually. You know, this piece, this piece. Um, it comes with a new new clip ring on the back, which I think I showed you, and then a new um, you know nut that goes on the end here. So um, let me just get this all cleaned up a little bit, start getting it together, and we'll show you a, a little bit more. Uh, in just a few minutes and thank you for sticking with me this far um, there's been a lot of off video um, stuff you know getting this apart uh, that's why I say if you have not worked on vehicles this is definitely not a first uh, project to start with because as you can see over here I got quite a bit of stuff apart you know you get the brake caliper you know unit is off um, it's you know it's not that difficult but the the part that's a pain is the baron, you know, getting the baron pulled out um, and then a new one pressed in. And then, um, I don't, you probably can't see it on the camera, but right in here is a little bit of a um, little um, groove. And that's where this old ring was pulled out of. That's it's clipped in there and it stops the, the baron from, you know, coming out. So, of course, we'll put the new one in there when we get this reassembled. We'll get that all cleaned out and and uh, start reassembling here shortly. So let me just get a little grease off my finger. We'll shut you off here for a bit and we'll be back in a minute. All right, uh, we can do a quick update here. Um, so you can see the Baron is now pressed in. It's got to come up all the way up against this back. Uh, it's got to go in here first before you press it on to the um, the other heart, because this has to come through this way, so the baron has to go in through the back, up against the little shoulder here, and then this will get pressed on um, from the front side. And then you notice too, 
the new clip ring is in. Uh, you might be able to see the split in it. Maybe if I turn the light on here. You can see right there by my thumb, there's a little split in the ring. And that's, you have to squeeze that and get it in that groove that's already in there. And that locks the Baron in place. So now what we're going to do, and I did this on the vise. Um, I started out using you know, a big socket, pressing it in. You want to make sure, uh, it was actually bigger than, than this one, that you're pressing on the outer rim, that metal, as much as possible. You don't really want to push on the inner one. That puts stress on the barons um, right from being brand new, and you certainly don't want to damage them. And now what we'll do is we'll go back over to the vise, and then we will press this in uh, to this side here. And once that's in, you can see we'll have a nice new baron, and we'll start reassembly. Uh, of the whole unit back onto the car and we'll have ourselves um, a new Baron. I'm sure this is probably, probably, I mean it only cost me about 45 bucks for the parts um, and it cost my own labor so I know if you take this to a garage probably a couple hundred bucks I don't know so you definitely save some stuff you know save money doing stuff yourself however like I said earlier uh, if you don't do a lot of work on cars if you're not at least somewhat familiar with some of the stuff this is you know not a project to start with um, but anybody that's done some stuff you know if you watch this video or just you know mess with it yourself um, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out as well but um, just remember the Baron has to go in here first then it goes in to the um, you know then this gets pushed in afterwards um, so just save you making mistakes uh, so let me uh, get back over to the vise we'll press that in and um, we will uh, show you the full assembly and before we uh, start putting it back on the car. We'll see you in a bit. I'm going now showing you that uh, we got it in the vise and we're going to be pressing it in. Um, the key is to make sure this is square back here. So I got an old baron here up against um, the clip ring in there. Um, this has to be square. If it goes in crooked, it's going to cause problems. So we're going to go, we'll just do a little bit so you can see it sliding in. You can see it. And I did put a little grease on that too. And we'll just slowly squeeze that in there gently, watching to make sure everything is square. It's not kitty cornering, jamming anything up as it's sliding in making sure you're not pushing up against any of your um, studs where you bolt your tire on. So far everything's looking good. That's my wife uh, actually cranking it down so I can hold the video. see we're getting closer again but we're taking our time going slow making sure I mean at this point it's probably not going to kitty corner because most of the um, you know the unit is in there so it's probably going to go straight but still I just soon take my time go slow uh, and make sure that it's um, going okay and then we're going to stop here in a second um, to make sure we don't go too far so uh, in just a second here we will um, take a look at it. So hold on and we'll be back with you. Alright, so there it is all together. We got the gap in behind here as close as we could to what it was when we first started. New Baron. Hopefully all is good. We're going to start the reassembly process now and get this back on the car. Hopefully I can do a little bit of this while we're filming you can see a little bit I'll leave the camera on for a minute I only shut it off I have a lot of difficulty it's gonna waste a lot of time but if I do I'll let you know what happens so you can learn from it as well but I just don't want to burn up a lot of time so we got to get these things all lined back up I think it's gonna tip So there's that one in there. Now this here, uh, yeah, you can see it. Because there's a spring on it, it's actually pushed down. So I'm going to have to, you know, do a little 
work to get that back up and then of course you got to get your you know steering arm back on Let's see, this is easy, this part's easy. My wife was concerned that I was forgetting this piece, but all this turns and moves easy. She didn't realize it moving around as easy as it did. So, so that, back up in there. And then we just start wiggling these pieces. So then now I'll just get the persuader here, small one. Looks like we're pretty close. What I'm going to do is see if I can get a bolt to start in there. Don't really want to tap on the bolt. If you do, just do it gently. If you don't go, then there we go. We're going to. Make sure you put your washers and your nuts all back on too. So there's one. You can see this one is not quite lined up here. So we might have to wait till we spin the steering wheel around a little bit, but while everything's right here, I'm gonna try and do these items. <clears throat> some of these parts because they don't uh, they're kind of rusty all right so now this would be a problem here sometimes that you thing will the whole bolt will spin because remember this is a, a, a knuckle in here that has to swivel and sway so sometimes it can be difficult and uh, you have to hold up on this or sometimes tap up on this to get it's a, it's a tapered joint in there so you want to get it to seat a little bit so hopefully it'll stop the bolt from turning. You still see it turning on me. So sometimes that can be a challenge. I know in this case it's just it's just got a couple bad threads on it. Hopefully. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I might be able to cheat, get this wrench on here, and then grab the top of it with a uh, so I'm just going to do is just grab it with vice grips here. I just got to get past some bad threads. And this bolt is made, the end of it does not have threads. So I'm not damaging anything by doing that. And then I can kind of hold that while I get this past those bad threads. Hopefully you can see that all right. Looks like you can. Once it tightens up that tapered... Um, the, the tapered uh, joint there will start to tighten down and, and it won't turn. You'll be able to tighten this right down good. You don't want this coming loose. This is what uh, turns your wheels back and forth from your steering wheel. Keeps your wheels in line with each other so you're going straight down the road. This ain't attached. This wheel's like a caster on a shopping cart. Just the front wheel to flop all over the place. You can see now it's I pass those bad threads. I don't even have to hold the vice grip. It's kind of staying by itself, and I'm able to really crank it down. So I want to get this out of the way because whenever possible, I like to use the the box ends. You have less chance of slippage. And we'll crank that right down. Good and tight. I'm sure all this stuff has specs for torquing it down. I do have torque wrenches, but I'm not going to be too concerned. I just want it good and tight. Okay, so now we have this one underneath here. I don't know if you can probably 
barely see it here. I'll see if I can move the camera a little closer. It's right up on top here. It's the um, bottom support um, for your front for the spindle. And if you remember right, that one was kind of a pain too to to do. It had some bad threads as well. Alright, so I'm gonna, this is going to take me a bit because I can only turn a little at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, get this tightened up. But you got the idea. I'm just going to tighten this back down, and then we'll we'll come back at you in a few minutes. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, we got it back on. Everything is bolted up tight. Um, everything's tight down here. We got um, that bolt underneath that I left off with just a few minute ago. Um, that also has a cotter pin, so we got the cotter pin back in it. We don't want it backing off. I got the um, the, the support bracket that holds the um, brake shoes and then the, the caliper back on and bolted down. Uh, so now we're going to put the um, shoes the shoes on here. We'll let the video go a little bit here. and You guys can see here a little bit. Actually, I probably ought to move the camera to the other side. Alright, is that where I'm working? Yep, looks like it. So we got this one in. It's one of your pads. Um, then we'll do this one. Those are all in place. Just making sure I didn't forget anything. Everything seems to be together. Should pull through more once we get the wheel turned. All right, we'll bring this around. Remember, this was resting on those boards. We don't want it hanging by the hanging by the. Now here's something I'll point out because I'm running into it right now. Um, when this sits for a bit, sometimes this piston will will push out a little bit because the fluid is in behind there. And you gotta kind of pry it back in. Sometimes I'll use a um, a C clamp or something like that, but I can probably just push it back here a little bit with a big screwdriver, hopefully. It's only got to go back a little bit, maybe. Key is you got to push level, so use usually you got to use a a clamp to get it. But I think I got it, so I knew I only had to go a little tiny bit with it. And you got these little rubber grommets right here that um, protect the the bolt, keeps dirt out of there. So you want to as you push this back on, you're going to want to just straighten those out. All right, and then. Remember we had two different size of these, if I remember correctly. The small one was in the bottom, the large one was in the top. And we just got to get that to go through that rubber grommet there. Now this one here, I think, has to, here we go, they have to be lined up just right. Get them started here. I know I do a lot of talking to myself. Actually, I'm talking to you guys. Hopefully, somebody's listening to me. All right, that one there is not. Well, there she goes. See, if everything's lined up, usually they go back in pretty good. Shouldn't have to fight with these too, too much. If you do, make sure that you check that something's not binding up. Um, if you don't have it on there correctly. Now this is not going to want to turn easy at first because remember your caliper is kind of pushed out a little bit. Okay. Let's snug these up here. Do 
just straightening out that boot to cover up the bolt. Just, you don't want to break them off, but you don't want them to come apart either. And I say refer to your owner's manual for the torque specs. That way you do it right. Okay, so that's back together. It looks like we're all set here. I'm going to have my wife straighten the steering wheel out on it. Um, and I'll probably take a second to show you a bunch of the tools I got laid out here so you kind of have an idea what I've been using out of the way. Okay, it's good. All right, so. Um, Give me a second here to uh, just move a couple things around. Um, also, too, I mean, we're not finished yet here, but we're going to just clean up a little bit here for a second. But you got to put this washer back on. Uh, and it came, the kit came with a new bolt, so I might as well use it. Once again, it goes on nice and easy. Uh, we'll tighten that down in a minute. So give me a second, and I'll come back and kind of show you some of the tools that I got pulled out and what we used and what we used them for. Alright, so I'll just show you a couple things. I mean, I did use a few, you know, your regular wrenches. Those are uh, standard. A lot, a lot of this was metric, of course. Um, I just run down the line here a little bit. And I use vice grips. I use those to pull out the cotter pins. Um, a really big um, socket set for pulling that main um, not off here. In fact, you know, it's a it's not one I use very often it's for um, obviously big big items. These were used for pulling the um, the um, clip off the back, so you can get a hold of those. Um, the old clip had the holes in it, but as you saw, it was in the vice grip when I ended up finishing up because uh, it was rusted in there so bad. Um, I did have to use a puller to pull a couple of the pieces off. Um, that was one kind of puller that I used. And then I had to use, um, uh, it's a, a hammer puller. And it's actually together over here. I'll show it to you. I had to use that because, um, you know, none of us are perfect. I actually put the baron on. Remember when I said the baron had to go on a certain way in a certain order? Well, I put it on um, the wrong piece first. So I had to turn around and, and um, pull it back off um, but you gotta be careful doing that hopefully I didn't damage it, it seems like everything was alright um, this is a you know another type of special puller uh, it's got a piece here to, to keep keep everything clamped tight you can see the little fingers moving in and out and then when you have it in place you just hold the end and this um, this slides and slams into that little nub right there thus pulling everything off and by having the three points it pulls nice and straight because uh, you can't pull these barons off at an angle you can't tap one side then the other they have to be pulled off straight uh, so that's some of the tools let me get things tightened up here and cleaned up and uh, we'll show you the hopefully the finished thing we'll see you in just a second all right so we're just finishing up here I'm gonna cut the wheel here a little bit throw the hubcap on And hopefully, we're in uh, good shape. I guess I should have saved the wrench out for this. We'll lower the car down here and take it for a test spin. Just get the safety lock off the lift, put it down, and see how it all works out. Alright, 
Move that parts down. Now he's got to put the overall lift down. Alright, so hopefully, got a couple problems with the lift. Hopefully, we don't have any today. on the floor. We will uh, take it out for a test spin here in just a second. Oh, it looks good. I gotta clean my garage. Don't don't mind my mess. There's always something going on in here. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Shane's Main Shop at YouTube. Uh, please like if you like. Subscribe as well. And uh, thanks again. And we'll uh, let you know how it all turned out.